Hey, January 30th, um, 2013. This is the Irish Game Dev Podcast. Hey, cool. <laughs> Great intro there from Marvel. Um, yeah, it's like this... Okay, is this episode um, one, I suppose, because we were doing um, counting. Um, I'm John Jeffrey. <laughs> I've got here today is Dear Murphy from Microsoft. Hello? Hey, John. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you keeping? I'm good. I'm all buzzed up after that techno intro, so I'm, I'm expecting <laughs> yeah. strobe lights and party yeah. just to kick off any time. <laughs> yeah, it's really there just to get you pumped going now, just full of energy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Jeremy. Um, yeah, just do you want to explain who you are, your background and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So uh, like I said, Jim, name's Jim Murphy. Um, so I'm working for Microsoft in our apps and game team based in Dublin. So what I do is uh, work with game developers and app developers in Ireland to help them basically be successful on when they're building apps and games for Windows 8, Windows Phone, or in the cloud for Windows Azure. So yeah. that's that's my nine to five. Oh, okay, cool. And you deal like with a lot of um, developers and stuff all the time then. Yeah, we deal with um, a mix. Like we'd be dealing with iOS developers and Android developers who are looking to port over their existing apps, yeah. um, and then we also work with maybe large corporations or typical, you know, .NET developers who are now only kind of getting to app development and want to bring across the skills they have from that uh, to Windows 8 or Windows Phone. So it's a mix of audiences that we work with. Okay, it's kind of come from both sides, like a previous Windows background, but not really apps, but then app background, but not really Windows. Yeah, yeah. So we're working with audiences who like us and audiences who really don't like us. So it's good because yeah. you get that mix of, you know, iOS developers where we're still evil and yeah. we're getting back at it, into it. Um, and then we have the .NET developers who, who know that that's all long in the past. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Um, so what do you kind of do for helping, like, um, just say there was, like, a um, game developer, they brought a game in iOS, like, last year or something. Like, um, what way would you help them to bring it over to, say, Windows Phone 8? Yeah, so we have... As part of like as, as the company, we have lots of tools and support to get those across. So Windows 8 supports a lot of the major engines. Yeah. So if you built, um, so for example, Unity, Monogame, Game Salad, Game Maker, um, a lot of those are very easily portable across because they're already supported on Windows 8. Um, but what we offer locally, so that you know, the difference we have over say the the Android or the Apple is we actually have a team here based in Ireland who six of us work in full time to help those developers so we can bring okay. people in and do trainings we have devices if you want to test on so we have you know everything from a surface up to you know big all in ones so you can test it on multiple different form factors and the same with phones um yeah. so we'd have the you know the nokia 610s on and, and the lower end and then we'd have the, the 920s and all these different devices um and then it's just also someone to plan out and design so we're not just there at the very end of the process you know if people want to come in we have developers available every Wednesday and Friday, so they can actually just sit down and come in with an idea. They can come in halfway through a design phase. They can come in with something finished and say, how do I port this across or how do I sell this better? So it's oh, really okay. the number one thing I think we offer is just someone there to talk to a real person who's available locally in Ireland. And we yeah. run a lot of trainings and events as well so that we can get out and talk to people. Oh, that's really cool then. Um, he's all based in Dublin then or are you around the yeah. country or a bit of traveling as well? So we're based in uh, in Sandyford in Microsoft, yeah. but we travel all over. So we're always doing events in Cork, Galway, Belfast, Limerick, and Dublin. Oh, okay, that's very cool. Yeah, well, this was sure. I was just um, saying as I was at the well, kind of the event um, yesterday at Google, and you had your own Josh Holmes there talking about like publishing for Windows 8 and stuff, doing the HTML5 apps, which I thought was really cool. Though. Yeah, that that one was uh, again. It's it's talking to again people who necessarily don't uh, work with us day in day out, such as yeah. you know Xcake groups and the Google Developer Group. Uh, and in that case, that was you know how you can build HTML5 and some of the the work that's been done for Chrome apps and how you can easily port that over to Windows 8. So a lot of the message we have is that you know it's not a big scary environment. You can take a lot of the skills you have already and easily bring those across and integrate that, and you're hitting two new platforms. Yeah. And um, what's the main languages you can use? Is it, was it JavaScript, HTML? And... 
Yeah, it's kind of goes down two routes. So if you are coming um, from a website or maybe from the Android side, you can use JavaScript and HTML. Or yeah. if you're, again, from a .NET side, you can use the .NET languages. So it comes from both sides. And of course, if we're using uh, doing game development, you can use a lot of the game engines, which will, again, be a step in between the code um, and that development. So things like Unity and Monogame will allow you to bring existing code and make that compatible. Oh, okay, that's very cool. Um... <laughs> Sorry, just completely blank in here for a second. I was sort of busy playing with levels. Um, yeah, so uh, what way am I thinking? Yeah, for Windows, was it Phone 8? Um, was it that launched in, was it that November, was it? Uh, Windows 8 launched October 26th, yeah. and I think Windows Phone 8 launched a few days after, but it's kind of, it's a bit slower because you're relying on phones to actually be available in market. So yeah. <clears throat> I think this week, um, or is it next week? The Nokia's are coming out on, so the 820s and 920s are coming out on O2 and Vodafone. And I think there's some out already. So I think the, the Samsung ATS is out already. So the, there's a few devices in store, the Windows Phone 8. Um, and then for Windows 8, there's, there's loads of devices out there. Yeah. So I think they've they launched October 26th. And so far, the latest numbers they've released is 60 million copies of Windows 8 sold. And I think 100, 000, 100 million app downloads Oh, okay. Jesus, so far Jesus. in the first three months or four months or however it's out, long it's out. Yeah. So it has it has taken off. It's selling faster than the previous version. So it's it's going well enough. We're seeing that locally. Um, one of the cool things is to have these conversations with de- game developers about, like I'm talking to you in my Surface at the moment, but yeah. you can have some, you know, small tablets like Surface or you can have big, massive 88-inch um, all-in-one machines like we bought this company pix uh, perspective pixel yeah they make 80 88 inch multi-touch screens i think you look have like 100 hands on at the same time <laughs> so that's about the size of like my wall here at the side of my house um but it's the idea that your game can be go from any kind of those form factors and you can be on laptops yeah. you can be on tablets you can be on massive screens you can be anywhere and I think that's something that game developers like and also the fact that you can have just touch like a lot of the games i play they could be just touch devices yeah. some of them would use um xbox controllers some of them would be mouse and keyboard so there's a variety of inputs as well to the design of so for designers it just allows you to maybe think that bit differently maybe relook at some of the design principles you had before and how you can integrate with these new control schemes and with these new um form factors yeah um actually just talking about different control schemes um <laughs> uh, what way would you tell people to approach like just say they're coming from more of a, like a PC background, like mouse keyboard games, and they're wanting to release something for well, the Windows 8. So there are like a number of slates, like Surface and like some Samsung slates and stuff. And would they try and like make a different game for Touch and then one for mouse keyboard, or would you be somehow be able to like fit controls in either way? Is that almost compromising? I, no, I, I don't think it is a compromise. I think you can fit the most of the games I've seen and, yeah. and I play have fit the controls in either way. Um, some of them maybe naturally are better fit for touch. So say you're Angry Birds, you know, yeah. that's, it's naturally, it's a touch driven experience. Um, but uh, but some some of them utilize it very clearly. There's a really good game, uh, Armed. It's built with Monogame. I think it's, yeah. it's a studio over in the UK who built it. Um, so it's like Command and Conquer. It's that kind of, oh, cool. you know, red, red alert kind of control team. But yeah. again, you can run it by touch or you can run it by mouse and keyboard. It works really well either way. It's just whatever you're most comfortable with. So there's that idea of bringing the skills you already have. So if you're, uh, if you were just building tablet games beforehand, you have this opportunity now to do something different with mouse and keyboard. Yeah. While it's still utilizing the, the touch controls you had already, or you can just be coming from the other side, like you were saying, coming from the PC background. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and th- that's when they're in, in the Windows Store. They're, like you can't really differentiate between like a mouse and keyboard like input type of game and then a touch game would you uh so in the store i think the rules are it has to support touch and it has to support some form of other input which could just be mouse yeah. again you know something like angry birds you would just use mouse you wouldn't yeah, be using yeah. keyboard um or you could just use keyboard depending on what it is so it has to has to be applicable for both types of users but what you'll find is more and more of the devices that are coming now are touch devices you know yeah. windows 8 is works really well on uh, mouse and keyboard, which is actually what my day-to-day machine is. It's not touch. Yeah. But when you're using touch, it, it's it's that much better. And yeah. it's, it's just it's just that, that bit different. So uh, most of the new machines you'll see coming out over the next few months will nearly all be touch. And then as we go on, it's going to be almost 100% touch, I'd say. 
Oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I, I just kind of upgraded my old box to Windows 8, so I'm just stuck on mouse and keyboard. I can I can touch the screen, but nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the other thing you're going to see is probably a huge jump in sales for screen wipers as all these people start touching screens that aren't touch screens and <laughs> yeah. smudges on them. It's like, oh, man, I can't see anything now. It's just fingerprints. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, is there any, like... Um, games that like are your favorite so far that you've seen now like just come out because it's only like a short number of months really for developers coming like any yeah like, the very first the, ones are more latest ones now yeah there is some um some of the you know the, the big ones came across at launch which you know star wars uh, angry birds a lot of the angry birds fruit ninja yeah. there's one i really like which was from windows phone and it's yeah. called wordament and it's a again it's another take on the the word play kind of game but what you do is you get a i think it's a six by six tile of each one being a letter and you got to drag using touch or using your mouse you drag around and you create words um which again isn't a completely unique process but what it does is at the end of the game you got maybe two minutes and you're playing against the rest of the internet and at the end of the game it shows you know all the different words that were got all the ones you missed what your friends got what percentage you were in the world and you know it could be quite quite demoralizing but it is (laughs) quite uh quite a fun kind of game and that's one I, I like um i'm trying to one i uninstalled last night was the you know the gunstringer game that you that on xbox yeah 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 so they ported a version of that over to the store and it was actually today's the 30th so it's free today okay. so by the time this podcast comes out i think the free offer may have been gone but it's yeah. free for 24 hours so that's uh, another little license it's kind of like a temple run star game yeah oh yeah yeah so i was hearing about that actually yeah. um, but that might have been because it was free <laughs> <I was> hearing... <laughs> Um, and then the other ones, like I said, the one I talked about earlier, Armed, I think is, is a, quite a slick game. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so just the way you keep kind of bouncing back and forth between Windows Phone 8 and then Windows 8. Um, do, like, for developers, like, would you encourage them like to work for both platforms or like kind of like take them as actually two separate platforms? Like, you can use a lot of the same code, but just the like interfaces because like screen size and everything. That, that's it's, exactly like, it. So pages. when you're, you're best off targeting um, both platforms and actually what we would say is we wouldn't tell people just to target exclusively windows you know t- t- there's so many devices broad to hit out there yeah but windows should be one of those devices that you that you target so the differentiators you have is like i said you have different screen resolutions yeah. so you have to think about that for resizing your art um, and then different control screens so the phone is obviously touch only yeah um while the uh windows 8 is a mix of touch and keyboards depending on what the user is using so really you can target both very easily there's there's a huge amount of code share between them yeah, at a yeah. kernel level so like the drivers the bluetooth stack the storage the memory they're all the same uh code you're building on a lot of the same libraries um and so it's just at the end we find a lot of people can if they design it the right way and they're kind of focus on both from the start you can have you know, 80 90 percent of code reuse and even higher potentially if you're using a game engine which does a lot of the um the library work in the back end support for you oh, okay that's pretty cool yeah. Um, yeah, it was what you were talking um, earlier. Sorry, it's just jumping ahead already. It's like um, it's the events you're doing, because um, I know we've got an event coming up like the end of February now. Yeah, we've uh, February twenty eighth. Uh, yeah. We're running an event. It's ourselves and the Games Ireland group. Yeah. So what we're doing, we're our part's called Gaming Reimagined, and it's their uh, Games Ireland gathering twenty thirteen. So they did it last year in the Griffith Hotel, I think it was. Yeah. For about, about three hundred fifty people, Hotel. and it, go ahead. The Gibson Hotel. Was- Gibson, sorry, Gibson. <laughs> Griffith is the college. I'm thinking yeah. of, of, of Global Game Jam on my head, so sorry. Uh, Griffith, or whatever one I was doing, <laughs> say, Gibson, Gibson. Um, so that's where it was last year. So what we're doing is, it's going to be February 28th. It's going to be in the Viva Stadium. Um, if you want to sign up, the URL is, or the short URL is tinyurl.com forward slash gig 2013. Yeah. Um, and what we're looking to do is split it between the day. It's going to be quite a good bit of content we're bringing some speakers over from the uk so it's about kind of celebrating some of the irish game industry so we're going to take some local speakers yeah. um, we're going to have sessions on you know setting up a, a game company and hopefully we're getting some people from invest and i and some of the best case people who can highlight some of the pitfalls it comes you know when setting up your own company and some of the things to watch out for when you're a new game company and some of the things that are out there that you should take advantage of yeah um we're going to have some sessions on game design as well so we got andrew spooner coming over from the uk who did a really good design session with bill buxton um on a 
September 26th, our last one of these big events, yeah. we had Bill Buxton over um, and he did a keynote with Andrew Spooner and went down really well. So we brought Andrew back to do one specifically on game design and how to think about game design. And the good thing is that that translates across you know, nearly all platforms. I, I mean, Angry Birds on Windows 8 looks very similar to Angry Birds on iOS. It's, you know, game design can be unique from what the OS is. Yeah. Um, some of the other things we're looking at is kind of some of the sessions on how to improve your chances of success in mobile gaming. So, and then in particular on Windows platforms. So it's, you know, that for every Fruit Ninja and Cut the Rope, there's a thousand that don't make it. So how can you improve your chances of being a hit? Yeah. Um, so with some sessions that, and then we're also having a good focus on the technologies that people are already using. So we're going to have sessions on Unity. So it's Owen Harris um, from Bitsmith's going to do that session. Uh, we have a session on, on Monogame. So how you can use Monogame or some of the work you've already done with that, with Windows 8 and port that across. And I think um, Andrea from Batcat is going to do that session. Oh, cool. uh, there's going to be a HTML5 session, so similar to what you were you kind of saw in the uh, Google developer group but more focused on games yeah. um, and then we're hoping to get three more sessions on the engines around game maker havoc and a session on windows phone development for games so they'll be kind of running throughout the day and people can jump into whichever ones they're already using and use their skills um, and then we're going to bring over some developers from the uk so there's can confirm the name at the moment but we will put it up on the tinyurl.com for slash gig 2013 when we have the names but yeah. it's going to be a, a studio head from one of the development studios mobile development studios over in the uk um who are bringing out some big games and have some games on i think they have games on windows 8 and they also have games on other platforms yeah. so they'll be giving uh, part of the keynote on that oh, okay that's cool and then the other good thing to look for because it's games Ireland gathering there'll be a lot of um basically the whole industry will be there you know it's the 350 at the last one in that um the last one they had last year yeah. and we're hoping for similar numbers around 350 people we're going to have an expo area where people can show off the games they're working on so if there is any the irish indies who are listening to this and they're interested in showing off their games we're looking for something like games Fla, where you can might maybe have an arcade you can set up your game and people can play it so if they want to give me a shout um i'll be at king dermid on twitter yeah. or if even through the contact us email in the event page then uh, let me know what their what their game is and what they're looking to show off, and we'll hopefully get them a slot. And we're even, potentially even looking for some speaking slots if people want to give like short pitches of their game. Okay, that's very cool. Um, so uh, yeah, it is, it's it's more of a collaboration with uh, like Microsoft and Gig is instead of well, originally the way I was thinking is like you were like the first part of the morning was like more Microsoft events, and then the later part of the evening or afternoon. Or is it just the whole day? It's just an amalgamation of all the lot. The, the the whole day is is a kind of mix of industry industry events. So ours are um like I said, ours are a mix of you know making successful companies and also some engine work. So it's yeah. it's a mix of here's some general game development tips and some help for you, and here's some of the Microsoft part of it. But it, it, the majority of it is about how do you you know make a successful game. Oh, okay, that sounds very cool. Um. Yeah, I'm just really addressing that. I remember hearing rumors just a few weeks ago and stuff. We'd be like, hey, so yeah, it's gig on again. Then, like, I knew the Windows event was going on. And then I heard there was, like, a love child going on between the two of them. I was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's what it, it will be a strange love child. Yeah. But that's what it's going to be. <laughs> um, so I think we've checked there before he came on. So 220 tickets already gone. So it's it's pretty, Jesus. it's going pretty well. Um, and I think we've capacity for about 350. Yeah. So. Oh, it should be a, a good number there as well. Yeah, and was it? It's on in the Aviva, isn't it? The Aviva Stadium, and um, we actually had to take the biggest room they had, so it's in the yeah. presidential suite in the Aviva Stadium, 28th of February, and it's tinyurl.com forward slash gig 2013. Okay, cool. That's all. Put that put that up uh, link with the blog post with this as well, so people will hopefully find it if they're just listening just to podcast through iTunes, wherever. Just go to irishgamedev.com, and it should be a blog post with it, and um, all the information they want. And even even information they don't want. Oh well, I'll throw it. Away. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, cool. Um. Fuck it. Well, we're already talking. Um. Do you want to talk about like any games you've been playing recently that just like catch yeah. your attention? Then? Um. Yeah. Sure. So what's the last one finished? Far Cry Three. Just finished that. Yeah. Two days ago. Oh, how'd you find uh, that? Pardon? How did you find that? I found it really good. I, yeah. I enjoyed like I I really enjoyed Far Cry One. It was one of the first. Uh, games i can remember where i actually got to shoot people in the sun yeah <laughs> like there's so many you know like something like dead space 
really yeah, good yeah. game in Dead Space, but it's it's corridor based, you know, and there's so many of these dark corridor games. It was so great to, if with Far Cry, just go outside and run around a tropical paradise and shoot shoot people. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Then Far Cry 2 got even better, but there was there was some problems with Far Cry 2. Like I thought the AI was terrible. You know, they kind of they said as soon as you leave the village, everyone attacks you, even if you're working for that, you know, team. Oh, they, just um, every, they just never implemented AI, and yeah. there was a few other problems with it, but. They seem to have, with Far Cry 3, taken everything that was broken to Far Cry 2, fixed it, and brought out a new game. So I, it's it's hard to find some faults with it. Maybe the the world feels a bit non-lived in. Like you go into a village and you see a few um, villagers walking around, but apart from that, you don't see any civvies in the real world. Yeah. But uh, it's it, I did really enjoy it, and it's actually one of the best hunting kind of game mechanics of any game I've played. That you're you have to hunt different animals to and skin them and when you skin yeah. them you can use their skins to build things like uh the ability to hold more weapons more grenades more ammo bigger health <laughs> packs and all these things are based you know and of course the the harder you go the more rare the animal is so you're yeah. taking on the bears and tigers and snow leopards to try and craft these really good um ammo holders and things like that so yeah. it's a really good mechanic i thought they did it better maybe than the red dead or assassin's creed did the hunting mechanism i thought there was more yeah. reason to follow through with it so I'd, I'd recommend that one oh, okay, right cool. yeah that's i've been hearing good things about it I just haven't um, bothered picking it up yet that's what i think it might will soon yeah the and then the other ones um before that it was forza horizon uh halo 4 and then just a lot of minecraft on xbox so yeah. the ones i was just kind of playing through recently yeah yeah i've heard, heard actually very good things about minecraft and xbox um i like i haven't had a chance but i played on like um pc and actually played on mobile as well um, but do you know, like, how does it differ? On yeah, it's so it's um it's a few releases behind, a little bit behind from the PC in terms of some of the new features. So they just got the mushroom plume and some of the crafting oh. features oh, okay. for I think uh, enchanting and things like that it only came out a few weeks ago because it's it's a port over by 4J Studios from Mohang. Yeah. Um, but I, it it has a lot of unique features then that the PC one doesn't have. So you can uh, do online co-op building. You can do on the couch, um, split screen. Oh, cool! So you're all building together. Yeah. Um, and then there's and there's you know it's achievements on top. Um, I think the worlds are slightly smaller, so they're not like these infinite kind of worlds that you have with Minecraft, but they're still really big. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it's something that I had heard about for years, Minecraft, but just never actually sat down and played it. And when I did, it kind of like it's like Lego with zombies in it. <laughs> Who couldn't love that? You're just hooked from the start then. Yeah, yeah, it, it it really taps to the kind of the OCD in all gamers, where you know you just have to dig down and you're looking for a diamond or you're looking for gold or something really rare. Yeah, and yeah, it, it's it's quite a good and addictive game. Yeah, that's what I find. It's like I'll just I'll just dig a little bit further. I'll I'll just check over here and like then like two three hours later I go. Crap. And then it's like ah lava lava. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh man, that's the worst it is. Everything goes oh, yeah. fire. Um, is that somebody? Sorry. What are you playing yourself? Um, I've been playing a little bit of Need for Speed Most Wanted and Hotline Miami, the two of them. Um, well, that's the Need for Speed Most Wanted. Like, I played Burnout Paradise, I don't know, I think about 130, 140 hours or something to that game. And mm-hmm. since it was like Criterion again, doing open world racing, I'm like, fuck yes, I'm getting this game. And I've, I've put in about 60 hours into this now again, and I've not even completed the actual, like, beat the most wanted cars or anything like that at all. I just, I just love driving around and doing, like, all the... Um, superficial stuff so like breaking all the barriers and like getting them um, all the speed cameras and all that yeah. I just absolutely Shit. love that and then all the multiplayer as well I love it so uh, every kind of I, get a lot, I buy a lot of racing games yeah. and I, I don't know why because I, I play them for you know maybe 40% into the game and then maybe something new comes out like exactly I, I had Forza and then I think I switched over to Halo 4 and Far Cry and still haven't come back to Forza Horizon but yeah. one of the things I really like about it is that they took like Forza 1, 2, 3 they're really good but they, they can get a bit samey yeah this one you're driving around kind of Colorado fictitious Colorado but around a music festival yeah um, so it has that real feeling that there is a real festival going on that this is a real place um, and just feels a lot I don't know more real than, than other racing games you're, you're, you're constantly doing challenge there's speed cameras and speed traps that you gotta break there's um, different race events off road and on road, and you're unlocking different cars as you go on at different challengers. So it's I thought it was an example of a game that took a very strict formula yeah. in Forza and in you know Project Gotham Racing and even 
Gran Turismo and kind of just changed it up a bit by making this open world racing game, which was still very focused. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not a bland open world with no linear path through. It still has you know a progression system and all that, but it did have this feeling of freedom driving around these really fast cars on a real road and moving between mountains and desert and <laughs> in the same tiny state. Yeah, oh, that seems really cool. Yeah, I've always heard really good things about that. And like, yeah, again, I want to get into it, but like, I feel like my racing quota is like filled with uh, Need for Speed at the moment. So, I also try and play other games that aren't racing <laughs> when I'm not playing that one. Yeah, so one of the things actually at the event on the 28th, we're probably going to try and get some uh, Xboxes together. People can kind of play a bit. Again, as much of this event, what people get out of is the ability to sit down with like minded people and talk about games and talk about what they're designing and developing. So, we want to help that uh, help that grow. And one of the other things we're looking to get is um, an Ar- Atari arcade. Ooh. So, can't, can't promise this thing, but yeah. <laughs> we, we have sourced one in the UK, which is uh, an arcade which has all the old Atari games on yeah. it um, and you can play them with the old joystick and controls oh sweet you should get like a leaderboard or something going for today and then like a jam yeah. at the end I remember when we were in uh, Dublin Web Summit the year before last we got a uh, I think Forza 3 just come out and we had the reasonably priced car driving around the Top Gear test track and we're giving out prizes for the fastest time so we might do might do something similar and some kind of prizes for I don't know most headshots or fastest <laughs> lap or something like that yeah that'd be cool yeah. actually let's so say remember um, was it Bits Mitt launch uh, a few weeks ago and um, they how does a Wii set up and obviously Street Fighter 2 came up on at some point through the Virtual Console and Jesus the competition and people that came out there <laughs> it was like um, just completely like no I'm playing again playing again I have to get this and then could be playing like, oh the controller's a problem oh, I've never used this controller and all that but it was just great buzz it was I loved that yeah I, I was there as well and uh, I was playing I think it was Mario 2 at the time yeah and I was like I don't I don't remember Mario being this hard yeah, it's so much harder <laughs> so much harder when you have you know 30 judging prof- people in the professional games industry looking at you yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I swear I'm good, I swear. <laughs> that, that, that hole in the ground came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh... But uh, yeah, in the, and the, I think, you know, from my perspective, there's nothing, like I've been playing video games for what, 15 more years. Yeah. My best one is when you're sitting down on the couch beside someone and you're playing GoldenEye or you're playing Mario Kart or you're playing FIFA or whatever it is and yeah. you can turn to that person and trash talk right in their <laughs> face and you can see the disgust in their face when you score and, and you're hiding when when they score yeah. um, I, I don't think no matter how good online gets I don't think it beats the ability to, to sit beside someone and slag them off that's what game's about yeah yeah I think all the, like in the same space room whatever is always the best way to play um, especially that like even just doing like your home like a few people like doing like um, I was recently doing like Street Fighter 4 if I can tournament just like a few beers whatever it's like hey cool we're just playing this <laughs> again with that you will think up the proper excuses when you're losing but then like once you're winning you're like shouting in their face like woo suck it <laughs> yeah I think Street Fighter is like darts you get better the more you drink so it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's a good game or just try and tell them to drink up faster than you that's about it you know, the more so. <laughs> until the controller goes the t- through the TV and, and the, <laughs> yeah. then the party's over yeah it's like oh it's the home time already oh okay yeah. <laughs> that's the way um yeah, because that's like, I know it's like even like uh, for Need for Speed Most Wanted, like playing that like online. It's like, it's great crack every now and then, but you do get the plebs who are like shouting in the microphone, stupid crap, or just no one's talking and just spinning doing nothing. You're like, come on guys, we're playing a game here. And like, if someone's sitting there with you, like you kind of nudge them and it's like, come on, get up the feck as they're playing. But that's like, a, just, yeah, that's always a kind of like um, thing I always find between online and offline, like playing with friends and stuff. Yeah, it, and that's it. There's so like I said, best is when you're on the couch with someone. The yeah. next step up is playing online with friends. Playing online with strangers isn't quite the same thing. Yeah. Um, like I was, I, I was playing Halo Four yesterday, and I'd never really got heard a lot about this mode. I never really got into it. Did you ever play Griff Ball on Halo? No, no, I never did. Okay, so it's it basically takes Halo and completely changes it. Turns it into like rugby. Oh. So you have a goal at either end of the pitch, and they put the ball in the middle, and all you have is a big hammer and a sword so there's no shooting there's no grenades and it's teams of maybe four and four but it's completely frantic because you're in this uh think of like an empty warehouse yeah. there's no walls there's no nothing to block you and you're just running around hammering and hitting people with the swords trying to get your ball the ball into their end and they're trying to get the ball into your end but completely frantic stuff um as many as a really action-packed really good fun but playing with strangers wasn't quite the same as you know playing with friends there and plan yeah. out strategies and run it through and yeah, but it, it, those kind of high octane games work best with friends. Yeah, yeah. Sure, I still think like one of my best um, 
time was, I was playing Battlefield 2 and it was well you get okay it was in a LAN event but um yeah it was just like once you're strategizing with people over microphone it's like okay we're going here we're going there and there was like this epic I can't even remember what map it was but um there was a few of us in a boat there was guys in helicopters who were going like upstream so it was like coming up to a narrow point where and the enemy's base was and like the helicopter was shooting overhead while we're coming and we're getting under fire and it was like man fucking games are awesome <laughs> It was just such an epic moment, but I love that. Yeah, idea. you can't really imagine sharing that experience with a book, can you? No, no. Or a, or, or a piece of music. You know, it, it's it's one of the the magic things that games has is it is it's an interactive story yeah. that you can interact with the game, but you can also interact with the pe- people you're playing with. Yeah. Um, and plus, like the story just changes all the time as well, because like um, obviously, like okay, land events you play these um, maps over and over and over like hundreds, thousands of times. And just that one specific moment is one that stuck out to me. It's like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Even with that now, I've like been wanting to get back into Battlefield 3 and I just haven't. So I'm like, oh, I want it. But I don't think yeah, I, I, was, I was thinking of ideas of what to do because I was thinking I, I potentially pay, spend far too much time playing games. So one of my ideas was, uh, and, and I'm going to say this, I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> I go through with it, was to basically give up video games for Lint with a caveat. Because I, I, I've, I've been wanting to learn a language for ages so i was thinking i'd learn spanish yeah so i was thinking right if i take all the time i spend on video games and put that into learning spanish i'll probably be fluent in three or four weeks yeah. whatever probably not that quick but <laughs> not longer but i thought the caveat would be i could only play games if i played them in spanish so oh. that might be like you know it's like a, like a rosetta stone but on xbox yeah. you know so you're playing um you have civilization in spanish you're playing Forza, or maybe with some text-driven games yeah. in Spanish, would you learn a language? I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe if anyone, if anyone knows of people, who, maybe there's any blogs on this, but the ability to use games to pick up skills, I think, yeah. is, a, is an opportunity that has, hasn't been explored much. Like I know most of what I've learned about military history, I learned from Age of Empires. You know, <laughs> you'd learn all these stories about, um, you know, Joan of Arc, the Frederick Barbarossa, the, the Holy Roman Empire, and all these things just from playing Age of Empires. And I, I wasn't, it was like educating me on the sly. I didn't know I was being educated. Yeah. That's actually a really good idea, trying, trying to learn a language while, like, through the game. Um, I might actually try that myself, because I'm, tr- I'm still trying to learn Swedish, and I've just been listening to podcasts and trying to pick up that way, but it doesn't, wor- doesn't work all too well, because I'm half the time I'm like, what the hell are they saying? <laughs> Get some context within a game, maybe I could actually pick it up. Yeah, context will help, right? Yeah. And plus, you learn all the curse words pretty fast, because that's <laughs> yeah. most of what games are made up of. That'd be actually very good, cool, it would be. Um, okay, is there anything else you want to talk about? Or? Uh, no, no. Any no. questions you have? Um, no, that's like, uh, we've, already, well, we've talked about publishing for like Windows and then um, the event at the end of uh, February. Actually, the one thing I will mention, if um, you talked about you know testing and devices, we're doing... Yeah. Um, a kind of contest or offer at the moment where basically we've teamed up with Acer yeah. to give away a whole load of Acer tablets. So they're Acer W510 tablets. They're Windows 8 Pro, which is great because it means you can build your game and you can test your game on the same device. Um, it is also comes with a 64 gig hard drive, comes with a keyboard and dock built into one, which gives you an 18 hour battery life on a tablet. So it's pretty cool. So they're pretty slick devices. They're worth about 750 euro. Um, and I somehow managed to convince Acer to give me 66 of them. <laughs> so I have about 50 grand's worth of tablets that Jesus. I'm looking to give to Irish game and app developers. Yeah. So in, in Northern Ireland or in the Republic of Ireland. So if anyone wants to get their hands on them, they go to microsoft.ie forward slash app. So microsoft.ie forward slash app. Um, and you choose the Acer section there, or choose the Windows 8 section. Um, and what we're the way we're giving them away is we're splitting them between people who build really good apps. So the best app each month will get uh, a tablet, and then we'll also try and give them some promotion to help their app be successful. So we're going to highlight them in our channels, you know, our LinkedIn, our Facebook, our, our YouTube pages, and then we're also going to submit them to be featured in the store. So we uh, we can submit apps that we think are really high quality to be submitted in the store, and if the store team agree then yeah. they're featured front page in, in the this, this store. So they're, they're the kind of things we're doing for the, the app of the month. Yeah. And then also if someone builds four apps or four games, uh, we'll give them a tablet as well. So these are people who are obviously big into building apps or building games, so we give them a device to test on. So the best app each month or build four apps and you get a tablet, <coughs> w, an Acer tablet. Um, and if you want to get in early, we just have... <clears throat> 
excuse me, an entry form. So if you fill out the entry form, we'll also give one away a month. So three ways to win entry form, app of the month, or just build four apps or games. Oh, cool. Is there any time frame on that? or is just uh, until It's until they, ru- they run out. Oh, okay. uh, so, <laughs> I, so we started in oh, start of January. Yeah. I think we've given away about 10 so far. So we have about 50, 50 to 55 left. Yeah. And of course, we've some put aside for the app of the month, which is going to run till I think May, and then some put aside for the uh, entry contest. But yeah, I, I would say I, we, we've done this before with Windows Phone, and they my guess would they, they should probably last till about March, but uh, don't hold me on that. Yeah. So people shouldn't be rushing just to, to put out you know, four apps or four games. Think yeah. about you know quality. Like I said, if you want to get in contact with me and check up how much is left, I'm at King Diermert or, or my details will come through this. Um, so yeah, take your time. There is obviously you know some quality checks you have to pass before you can submit an app a game to store. So we want you know people to be building good quality apps and games. But yeah. if you want to sit down and talk to someone, plan out your games, plan out your apps, the, all the contact details are up on microsoft.e forward slash app. So you can come in and talk to one of us, come along to our event on February 28th and meet up with us. And I think we're going to be actually traveling around the country to Sligo, Galway, Cork, Belfast, and Dublin um, over the end of February and start of March. So coming to a town near you. So if you want to meet up or come along to one of the events, then again, keep an eye on that app, microsoft.e forward slash app, or again, uh, on Twitter, I'll be posting up when the uh, events run. Ah, oh, cool. That sounds awesome there. Um, yeah, so I suppose people take doing those apps. I have to go yeah, start doing yeah. some of my own then. <laughs> <laughs> start working. Um, anyway, so yeah. Um, that's everything then, is it? You want to talk? Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Thanks very much for having okay. me on, John. No problem. Thanks for thanks for talking and um, explaining a lot of things for everyone. Um, hopefully, yeah, I'll put up uh, your contact details again, like in the blog post and such. And um, yeah, cool. Thanks for coming. Right. Cheers. Have a good one. Thanks again. You Best too. Luck. Thanks. Bye.